We will let go and let God have his way. I want to read a few verses of Psalm 27 this morning before we begin. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. The war break out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Good morning, Imani family. Good morning, friends. Good morning, community. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Psalm 150 says, let everything that hath breath, I don't know about you, but that word right now really speaks to me. Let everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. God bless you. I thank you for joining me this morning, for allowing me into your homes, and for allowing me into your personal and private space. Um, I do ask that you please share the video. If you don't mind, share the video. And I ask that you pray for me during this word. Just like so many of you, my heart has been troubled. My heart is heavy. My soul is heavy. But yet I trust in the Lord with all my heart. And I know that we have victory in Christ Jesus. Let us have a word of prayer. Our gracious and loving God. We love you and we adore you. But Lord, we call on your strength this morning. We call on your power. Call on your presence. Because we need you, dear God. We need you in the midst of chaos, conflict, and disorder. We need you in the midst of this darkness. We need you, God. May our labor not be in vain this morning, O oh Lord. May our march not be in vain may our protests not be in vain lord but we ask that you be with us and that you renew our strength as we seek to stand for what is right as we seek to speak out against evil as we seek oh god to stand for righteousness we ask lord that you be with us but that we also be reminded lord that we cannot do this in our own power nor can we do this in our own strength Lord, lead us and guide us in accordance to your will and your way. We ask this in all things, in the wonderful name of Jesus, the Christ, our Lord, and our Savior. Let us say amen. Send me some hearts. Glory to God. Glory to God. I have a word from the Lord, and it took me a while to write this message because my thoughts, if I can be honest, are in many different directions and hopefully this prayer this message is not in many different directions there are no alliterations today there are no clever um, crafted points this morning I just want to preach from my heart that you may have hope that we may have hope and that we continue in the fight and that we continue on this journey in the name of Jesus I'm going to ask you to open your Bibles with me on this Pentecost Sunday I'm going to ask you to open your Bibles with me to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. And I'm going to ask that you read with me. Yeah, right where you are, read your Bible, open up your Bible. And um, to verses 10 through 13. I'll give you a second. Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 13. 10 through 
13. And the word of God reads as follows. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil and the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand. This morning, I want to entitle this message, Stand. Stand. I will never forget a summer day in 1990, 30 years ago, when I found myself in a position where I could not breathe. As two hands gripped my neck in a fit of rage and I was defenseless to break free, a fear came over me as I struggled for air. And I don't know how long the struggle to breathe lasted, but unlike George Floyd, Floyd with a knee to his neck by a police officer, or Garrett Garner, who six years ago was locked in a chokehold by an officer. I live to tell my story. No, I was not a victim of police brutality, but I am a survivor of domestic violence. And you may ask, how does domestic violence compare to police brutality? Because both are an abuse of power. Both results in a lack of accountability by our judicial system where perpetrators often go unpunished or get a slap on the wrist. And it leaves these persons feeling even more empowered and entitled, believing that they are above the law. And if you've ever been in a position when you could not breathe due to an oppressive situation, system, or environment, because the powers that be saw no value in your presence or personhood because of your race, your sex, your nationality, or because of their own sense of superiority. You understand that you only have two choices in the situation, and that's either bow down or stand. Surrender to the suffering or stand. Accept it as your place and position or stand. Believe that prayer alone is the answer or stand. And after enduring a relationship of physical violence and losing not only my identity and feeling hopeless as I struggled to breathe for the next year, I attempted to take my life with a half bottle of pills because I thought it was better not to breathe at all. But death rejected me. And my fear and hopelessness eventually turned to anger. I did not want to live in existence any longer where it hurt to breathe. And I made up in my mind that I was going to take control of my life because I wanted to live. But in my mind, for me to live, he had to die. And I don't ever believe I shared this part of my story publicly, but I made a decision that the next time he attacked me, the next time he laid hands on me, I would end his life. I knew he had a gun somewhere in the house because we shot it on New Year's Eve. And for several days while he was at work, I would search everywhere in the house for the gun, under the bed, under the mattress, in boxes, and on, in tables. I was desperate to take his life that I may take my life back and breathe again. 
It would have been, I understand, premeditated murder on my part, and I would have claimed self-defense, but just like death rejected me when I took the half bottle, bottle of pills, uh, grace denied me the opportunity of taking matters in my own hands. And it was one morning while watching Oprah Winfrey, and she had a special segment on the topic of domestic violence, and I discovered from her show that I was a victim. And I discovered that I had the power to take control of my life and leave. And it was that morning when I made two phone calls, packed my daughters up, grabbed their belongings, and I walked out the house while he was at work, never to return again. That was in 1992. And in 1994, I joined Demani Church and gave my life to Christ. And the Holy Spirit breathed on me. And I was able to truly breathe for the first time in my life life. And as I reflect on what's happening in our country with racism, white supremacy, police brutality, racial profiling, voter fraud, gerrymandering, redlining, and so forth, as black Americans, we are in a perpetual chokehold that hinders our breathing and keeps us from being who we are destined to be and do as the children of God. And as the knee of injustice continues to bear on our necks as another black person, George Floyd, dies by excessive force and inhumane treatment by an officer, we are not only grieved, we are angry. We are already grappling with the notion that Ahmaud Arbery, a black man, could be killed while jogging and no charge filed against the two white men who murdered him because they claim he was breaking into homes. It wasn't until a video surfaced and outrage and protests emerged that led to action being taken against them. And then we hear about Breonna Taylor. Breonna Taylor, just a baby. My daughters are older than her, a 26-year-old black woman, an emergency room technician who was murdered by police when they burst into her home with a no-knock warrant intended for her boyfriend. Um, Breonna was shot at least eight times by police after her boyfriend shot his gun, thinking that someone was breaking into their home. And then they discovered that there was no, not even any drugs in the house and I'm no psychologist but this brutality and injustice plays on a person's psyche and after a while you either just bow down and to sub and submit to what is or you make a stand and you say no more just like I was fed up with being in a relationship where I was mistreated and I could not breathe and made up in my mind to, to make a stand. Well, let me say we are fed up, we are tired, we are angry, and we will stand. And I've heard the complaints from our government from white America and even some black folks about the rioting that is breaking out during the protests across the country and the infamous quote um, from Martin Luther King that a riot is a language of the unheard and America still is not listening. And as one who is vehemently opposed to violence, yet at one time in my life, in a desperation to breathe and be free, violence was a consideration. But as a born-again believer, as a Holy Ghost-filled woman of God, as one who has been set free from the power of God, I know that violence is not the answer, but I also know that those in power and position cannot continue to ignore the plight of poor people, black and brown people, poor women, and not address the racism, white supremacy, and patriarchy that plagues our country. So what do we do as a church and as a people? We stand. That's what we do. Our passage from Ephesians instructs us to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. That means that we do not rely on our own strength and power, but in God's. But there is no deficiency or weakness in God's strength and power. It is able to sustain us. It is able to hold us up that we may be confident to stand tall and strong in the battle that we are in. And as a church, we are expected to stand, not cowered away, not remain silent, not respond passively, not pray and be back to business as usual, but stand. 
And the Apostle Paul makes it very clear. We must stand against the devil's schemes. The devil seeks death and destruction. But Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. But you cannot live if you cannot breathe. You can't truly have life if you're being suffocated by a system that was never intended to be in your favor. Therefore, we must prevail against the devil's tactics. And Paul reminds us that the true enemy, the true enemy is not the police officers who killed George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Eric Garner, Tamir Rice, and countless others, though they ought to be all charged. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, though we seek to hold these individuals accountable. It is the system that allows the behavior that we stand against. It's the ideology that all lives don't matter, but only white lives. But how this country treats its people of color and its immigrants, we wrestle not. The Bible says against principality, against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. We are fighting a spiritual battle. And these dark forces manifest itself through racism, classism, sexism, and anything else that seeks to cause division and chaos, destruction, and death. These dark forces are seen in our nation, in our communities, and in our homes. Violence, poverty, hopelessness, greed, and death. And we need God, beloved. We need God. We need God's power. We need God's presence. We need God's strength. For we must overcome the evil that plagues our land. We must stand, and we must stand our ground. And to do so, we must put on the full armor of God. And if you read through to verse 18, it requires that we are girded and equipped with truth and righteousness and peace and faith and salvation and the word of God. And it instructs us to pray in the spirit. As I stand before you this morning, overwhelmed with emotion as an African-American, as an African-American woman, as an African-American woman pastor, I experience racism, oppression, oppression, and sexism on all fronts. And at times, it is overwhelming to the point where I can't breathe. Ah, but the Spirit of God never lets me faint. The Holy Spirit breathes breathes on me and in me over and over again that I may stand and do the work of the Lord that I have been called to. And together, as the church, we must stand. How do we stand? Three quick points. I'm not going to be before you long. How do we stand? We arm ourselves appropriately for battle. We arm ourselves appropriately for battle. We don't arm ourselves with water bottles to throw at the police or Molotov cocktails that we may throw into police cars and buildings. We don't arm ourselves with guns, but we arm ourselves with truth. And truth is, black lives matter. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And if you are offended by my statement that black lives matter, you are missing the whole point. It means that we must demand to be treated equally, fairly, and entitled to the same rights and protections afforded to white America. Black Lives Matter does not mean that we perceive ourselves as better than. It means that we refuse to allow others to perceive us as less than. Truth is that Jesus came to set captives free. For Jesus came to preach good news to the poor. He came to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, and to release the oppressed. Jesus cares about the least of God's people, the marginalized, the dehumanized, the poor, and the oppressed. So we stand on truth, and we do what is necessary to ensure that the systems that are in place that discriminate or work for some and not for all are dis mantled 
We must not only pray against human suffering by unjust systems, but we must fight for those who suffer. How do we stand? Number two, by leading the way. Leading the way. The church must be on the forefront. Let me say it again. The church must be on the forefront. Goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than darkness. Light is stronger than um, light is stronger than darkness. Love is stronger than hate. But to be on the forefront, we must be united. We must work together. For there is only one church. There are many denominations and places of worship, but there is only one church, and the church must serve as witness. We must confront evil, and we make that we may conquer evil. Evil. And it requires that we move beyond just simply altar calls after we preach the word, but that we call out evil in our government and in our communities, and then we help work together towards change. That means using the gifts within the body of Christ, our pool of res and pool our resources together to teach, to train, to implement programs that people are not only set free, but that they are given tools to live. We must, as the church, lead the way. But lastly, how do we stand? We pray in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, and utilize the gifts of the Spirit. We pray in the Spirit, we walk in the Spirit, and we utilize the gifts of the Spirit. Yes, we must vote, we must petition, we must protest, we must hold our community leaders accountable, speak up and speak out, demand action, hold town hall meetings with our elected politicians every six months, make them accountable to us, know what they are doing, and call them out for what they are not doing. But we're also reminded that this is a spiritual war. So the work that we do is not only physical and practical, but it is also spiritual. The war is in the heavenlies, and we must fight in the heavenlies that we may see a change and shift in the earthly realm. And that requires that the Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit to not only breathe on us, but the Holy Spirit to be given free reign to lead and guide us according to God's will. We must pray in the Spirit and allow the Spirit to speak through and work through us. If there is a time in which the church needs knowledge and wisdom, it is right now. What is the Spirit of the Lord saying? If we ever needed the gift of faith, it is right now. If we ever needed the gift of, mi of miracles and healing and the gift of prophecy and discernment and not just speaking in tongues, but in interpretation that we may know what the Lord is saying it is now beloved we must stand on truth and with goodness and righteousness in the strength and in the power of the Lord. And on this Pentecost Sunday, we are reminded that the Spirit gives us the supernatural strength and power and gifts and tools we need to do the work that we've been called to, to serve as witnesses of God's love and salvation. So today, today we must stand. Today we must raise our voices. Uh, today we must fight against injustice. Uh, today we must fight in the spirit. Uh, today we must call out evil and conquer evil. Today we must remember that every soul has a God-given right to breathe. And we hold accountable those who do not value every human life that has been created in the image of God. And so what must we do? We must stand on what is right and what is just. We give our anger we give our sorrow and our frustration to God. And in exchange, God will give us his strength and power 
that we may continue the work of the Lord and fight for what's right, what's good, and what's just. Today, we stand. Let us pray. Our gracious God, we are feeling so many emotions. It seems that we keep finding ourselves back in this same place. It seems like at times we're fighting a losing battle. But may we be reminded we have victory already in Christ. Lord, I pray for us all. I pray for those who are suffering right now in the midst of this pandemic. Where we're dealing with a virus that seeks to hinder our breathing. We're dealing with police brutality that seeks to stop our breathing. We're dealing with all forms of oppression that suffocates us. But you call the church at a time such as this to be light in darkness to be salt of the earth, to stand tall and to stand strong. Lord, we know that often Jesus would confront the religious leaders on their hypocrisy. Lord, may we not be afraid to confront hypocrisy but as the church, may we confront our own hypocrisy and biases and our own race, our own prejudices. Let us be reminded as the church that there is only one church. Let us be reminded that Jesus died for all people, black and white, red and brown, immigrants, foreigners, gay and straight. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for sometimes, O oh God, having systems in place within the church that are oftentimes oppressive. Wake us up, open our eyes. May we see what we need to see May we hear what we need to hear. And then may we go out and be the church, standing on the front lines, remembering that our job is to continue the mission that you left before us, to be witnesses of your grace, witnesses of your mercy, witnesses of your power, witnesses of your salvation through Christ. Thank you, Lord, that we are not alone. You will bring us through. You've brought us through since the beginning of time, and you will bring us through. May the Holy Spirit endow the church with wisdom from on high, that we may know how to respond and proceed. Lord, we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Imani family, we are the church. We have a responsibility to be light that shines in darkness. What to do with your righteous indignation? Fight in the spirit. Stand tall. Stand strong. Speak up. Speak out. 
show up and let the spirit show out. God bless you. But before we go to our announcement, I open the doors of the church. Technically, the doors of the church are never closed. But if there is a soul out there, and maybe you're in a place where you can't breathe because you're dealing with addiction, you're in the midst of your own oppression from debt, from joblessness, from hopelessness, abuse. Whatever it is, we have a God who will set you free and give you life. We serve a God who will give you the power to stand and to live and who will give you not just life, but life more abundantly. And the Spirit of God will empower you to live above the evil and the darkness of this world. And so if you do not have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Word of God says if we confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. Is God speaking to you? Is the Spirit of God whispering in your ear saying you need to surrender your life to me that I may give you life, that I may give you hope, that I may reveal to you the reason for your being and the purpose for your life, and more importantly, give you a fresh start and a new beginning and give you the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If the Spirit of God is speaking to you, I invite you to go to imanichurch.org, imanichurch.org. And there's a form on that page, a form that you complete if you desire to fellowship and to be, enter into covenant relationship with our spiritual family. Be blessed, Imani Church. Stand strong. Listen to this announcement. And please continue to give faithfully to the work of the Lord and the mission of Jesus Christ through Imani Church. Will you give? Will you pray? Will you stand? And will you be strong? God bless you.